بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Come to chapter number 50 and it is the chapter of the statement of Allah Ta'ala فَلَمَّا أَتَاهُمَا الصَّالِحَا جَعَلَا لَهُ شُرَكَا فِيمَا أَتَاهُمْ Similar to the previous chapters that came before it, the Imam is using ayat of the Qur'an to establish the chapter. And this particular ayat is the ayat from Surat Al-A'raf, ayat 190. Allah Ta'ala mentions, and when good came to them, they made shirk in what they received. The great scholar of Islam, Al-Imam Ibn Hazm, he said that the prohibition of every name of servitude to other than Allah Azawajal is agreed upon, like Abdul Amr, for an example, or Abdul Kaaba, and that which is similar to it, with the exception of Abdul Muttalib. So, the chapter is referring to the impermissibility of giving the name of the child, the name of servitude for other than Allah Azawajal, which is common in some parts of the Muslim world. So the ayat of the Quran, the Imam is using this chapter to show, goes against a tawheed, and is a form of a shirk. For an individual to have a child, and then he calls the child Abdul Amr, the slave of Amr. It's not permissible. So the ayat, before we get into the explanation, is that Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al-A'raf, and when we gave them a child that was wholesome, it came out full came out with good health the mother and the father they make partners along with Allah in that which we gave unto them you'll find ikhwani in the uh, ummah of al-islam and this is not something from what the companions were upon before al-islam came the kuffar of Quraysh they used to make shirk with Allah azawajal in the way that they named their children like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grandfather's Abdul Muttalib, the slave of Al Muttalib. And one of the reasons why they called him that is one of the issues that made some of the ulama made the exception for Abdul Muttalib. So they used to give the child a name and call him the slave of this one and that one. Abdul Manaf. Abdul Uzza. After the Messenger of Allah came, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you won't find any of his companions, not a single one of them, making a mistake where he called his child, son or daughter, by a name of a shirk. When people used to come to the Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they themselves used to have names that were not acceptable Islamically, he would tell them to change their names. If the names of their fathers had shirk in it, he would leave them like that. But their specific names, if it entailed disobedience to Allah or shirk, he would change their names. So you won't find a single companion coming and he named his child with the name of a shirk. 
So the Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is using this chapter to show from a shirk and what goes against a tawheed al khalis is for an individual to have a child and then he makes that child, gives that child a name of servitude to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. That compromises a tawheed and it goes against a tawheed. The people of a Shiite, Shiaism, they call their children Abdul Hussein, Abdul Hassan. They call their children Fida al Hussein, the sacrifice of Hussein. So they come up with a lot of names like that Abdul Abbas. You never met the person in your life, you don't know who he is. When you ask him, What's your name? He's a student in a university, you don't know who he is. The first day that the teacher calls out the roll call for the names of the students, you hear a name like Abdul Hussein, Fida al Hussein. And Fida means the sacrifice of Hussein. The mother and the father wants to show their sincerity to Allah Azza wa and to their love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they call the child Fida al Hussein. The sacrifice of Hussein, meaning I'm going to name this child by this name because I know historically Hussein went to Al Iraq and he was slaughtered and he was killed unjustly, assassinated. So, as a Muslim, I'm naming my child the sacrifice of Hussein, meaning I'm going to show my proof, my love, my commitment to the Prophet, وسلم, to Ali ibn Abi Talib. By calling his child Fida al Hussein. If I was there, I would be willing to sacrifice my son. That's shirkum billah. It's not permissible for you to sacrifice your son for Hussein. It's not permissible for you to sacrifice a rabbit or a chicken for Hussein. It's not permissible. Hussein, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, was from the best of Allah's creation. And as the Nabi mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he along with his brother, they will be the leaders of the youngsters in Al-Jannah. Him and his brother being the leader of Al-Jannah from the youngsters, your attempting to make this statement doesn't put him up more, doesn't put him down more. Not permissible for anyone to give that kind of name to his child. Also, the people of At-Tasawwuf, people of Sufiya, they have the same problem, Al-Ghulu. And we dealt with Al-Ghulu in the personalities. The people of Tsawif, you never met the man before, you don't know who he is, first time you hear his name, you get an indication he's a Sufi. You get an indication that his mother, his father was Sufis. He come from the background of Sufiya. They called the son Abdul Nabi. Call the son Abdul Rasul. That's his name. His name is Abdul Nabi Abdul Ar Rasul. It's not permissible in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. The person who does that is compromising the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. No matter how much a person may claim that he loves the Prophet وسلم, or he loves and respects and he honors and reverences Al Bayt, this is what is impermissible in this particular chapter. Name your children by the good names of Allah Azzawajal, by the good names that the religion has allowed. The Prophet told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, name yourselves after the prophets and name yourselves after the messengers. He told the people, name yourselves after me, Muhammad, Ahmed, Mustafa, Aqib. Name yourselves like that. But don't name yourselves and name your children with names that go against the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa That's what this particular chapter is about. He mentioned that Imam Ibn Hazm, the famous scholar who was from Spain, he said that the prohibition of every name of servitude, al ubudiya to say Abd, whatever, Abdis, Abdat. Ibn Hazm said, the prohibition of every name of servitude to other than Allah is agreed upon. And it's not permissible. Abdul Amr, for an example, is not permissible. The slave of Amr, 
or Abdul Kaaba. The Kaaba is something that is respected, is exalted, is raised up. And although it's the Kaaba and the Bayt of Allah Azawajal, only the person who is Jahil and he doesn't know about a Tawheed, he names his child Abdul Kaaba. And that's one of the problems with this issue of what we find common practice amongst the Muslims. The Kaaba has a special place in the hearts of every single Muslim. People of Tawheed know, despite the place and the makan of the Kaaba, the manzila of the Kaaba, in the hearts and the minds of every Muslim, the muwahidun, they realize the Kaaba is really important. But the average person of the ummah, the ignorant one, he thinks respecting Allah Azawajal and showing his, his appreciation and his respect to the Kaaba is the name his child Abdul Kaaba, or even lesser than the Kaaba. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the greatest from Allah's creation. So the person comes to say he is Abdul Nabi, Abdul Rasul. And it's similar to the chapter that we took before when a person wants to swear. So he swears by the Kaaba. I swear by the Kaaba that I'm telling you the truth. And he goes on and he talks about his issue. In many parts of the Muslim world, especially in Sudan, they said, what Nabi? I swear by the Nabi. The individual may swear and he lies. He lies when he says Wallahi and he's lying. But when it comes to Rasulullah, he says, What Nabi? Or Alayka Nabi. I'm swearing, I'm asking you this thing by the Nabi. All of that is shikum billahi azza wa jalla and it's not permissible. Ibn Hazm in what the Sheikh brought. He said that there is an ittifaq, an ijma. All of the ulama are in agreement. It is impermissible for an individual to swear by or to give a name to his child by other than one of the names of Allah Azza He said, but there is an exception, and that is the name of Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. And that's because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one of the battles that he was fighting, the news began to spread that he had been killed. The Kufar said, we killed Muhammad. We killed him. So some of the Muslims who were not in his presence, when they heard that he had been killed, obviously it's going to affect them. The companions, when they fought against the non-Muslims, they were not fighting on behalf of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were fighting to make the kalima of Allah uppermost. For all of their love, for all of their reverence, for all of their respect of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions, Radwanullahi Alayhim Ajma'een, they were not fighting for him. They were not worshipping him. But obviously, clearly, while you're fighting, while this is going on, if you heard, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been killed. That catches your ear, it's going to affect you. It's not going to cause you to throw your sword down and say, okay, I give up. The God that I was fighting for has been killed, so I give up. Take me as a prisoner. When they heard that news, it's going to affect them. No doubt about that. The Prophet Wasallam realized what the Kufar of Quraysh were doing. They were trying to make the Muslims disheartened by saying, we killed Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. When the Prophet Sallallahu heard them saying that, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana Muhammadun. He said that I am Muhammad, the Nabi, and this is no lion. Ana Muhammadun Nabi Allah. I'm the Muhammad, I'm Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, and this is no lie. La Kedib. I'm the son of Abdul Muttalib. And it has some rhyming to it. First part and the last part. So he said that I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. He didn't say he was the son of his father Abdullah. He said he was the son of his grandfather or his father, his, his grandfather. Some of the scholars said that the reason why he said that is because in the tradition of the Arabs, sometimes when they wanted to make the situation important as it relates to their lineage, they were mentioned there grandfather, one of their grandfathers. And this is something that is well known in their history. So the point is that he said that he was Muhammad, 
the son of Abdul Muttalib. So if it was haram to call him Abdul Muttalib, why didn't he call himself Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, which is closer to Tawheed? As a result of that, the point here, Ikhwani, is Imam Ibn Hazm said that some of the scholars were of the opinion that it is important, it is permissible for a person to call himself Abdul Muttalib, because Abd al Muttalib, it means the slave of this particular person. It doesn't mean the slave of servitude. It doesn't mean the slave of servitude. So the vast majority of ulama, the ulama of Tawheed, especially, they say, no, even Abdul Muttalib, you can't call your child Abd and Muttalib. It's not permissible. And that's better, and that's purer, especially with all of the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa The Imam brought the next issue, and that is concerning the ayat that was mentioned. And again, Ikhwani, it's really important to uh, comprehend this ayat. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, فَلَمَّا أَتَاهُمَا صَالِحَا جَعَلَ لَهُ شُرَكَا When we gave him a child that was wholesome, that was full, and it came out okay, they made Allah Azza wa they made for that child, they made shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal. Abdullah bin Abbas, and may Allah be pleased with him, he said concerning this ayah, when Adam learned of his wife's pregnancy, Iblis came to Adam, and Iblis said, I am your companion who had you removed from paradise. Obey me, or I will make your child to have two horns like a deer, which will rip your insides when it comes out. Meaning, how I was pregnant, according to this narration, Iblis came to Adam to tell him, I'm the one who got you out of Jannah. If you don't listen to me, I'm going to give this child that's in the stomach of your wife, Hawa, I'm going to give him two horns. When it's time to be born, he's going to rip her insides out. He said, the narration of Abdullah bin Abbas, I will do this and I will do that and I will do this and I will do that in order to frighten Adam and Hawa and to call him the child Abdul Harith. Abd al Harith. When Iblis came to them with that karam, both of them refused to obey him. Then the child was born and it was stillborn. It didn't come out as a complete child. It came out stillborn. Then Hawa, Eve, she became pregnant again. So Iblis came to them again and he said the same thing that he said before. Name the child Abdul Harith. They still did not obey him and the child was still born for a second time. Then she was pregnant again. So Iblis came to them to talk to them and to mention these things to them for a third time. This time, out of their sense of love for the child, they called him Abdul Harith. That is why Allah Azza wa said, as the ayat is mentioning, they made shirk in what they revised and what they received. And that hadith with this narration is recorded by Ibn Abu Hatim. Ibn Abi Hatim. So the narration is basically saying that when Hawa was about, or when she was pregnant, Iblis came to them and told them, I'm threatening you, name the child Abdul Harith. They refused to, with Adam being a Nabi and his wife being from the Oliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. The child came out and it died, it was stillborn. When she became pregnant again, Iblis came to them with the same threats, with the same kalam. They refused to call him Abdul Harith. The child died. They came to him the third time. This is what this narration is saying. This narration by Al Imam Ibn Abi Hatim, although he's from the ulama of Al Hadith, one of the tremendous scholars of Al Hadith, it is not authentic. And although I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that this is not authentic, any Muslim, any Muslim 
who was to read this story for the first time, he has to say to himself, based upon what I know about the NBA and the Imam with the NBA, this can't possibly be authentic. Adam Salawatullahi Wasallamu Alayhi was a Nabi from the NBA, the first Nabi. And the prophets and the messengers, they're like every other human being. They make mistakes. They make mistakes. Salawatullahi Wasallamu Alayhi Ajma'een. But they don't make the major mistakes and they don't make a shikum billah. It was not possible. It's not something possible. Am I telling someone here for the first time you read this hadith? You're going to reject the hadith itself? No. But when this narration comes to you, you never heard it before, you're going to say, hey, there's something wrong with this. I have to research this. I have to look into this. I have to take a closer look at this situation. So the hadith is da'if. Some of the scholars of Al-Islam, they try to make a way out for the hadith by saying, the hadith is not talking necessarily about Adam and Hawa. Some of them said it's talking about some of the people from Ahlul Kitab. Not Adam and Hawa. Some of them said that this narration comes from Ahlul Kitab. Whatever the case is, in our religion, this hadith does not find itself rising to the level and the degree where a hadith is accepted in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is mardud, it is rejected. If shaitan came to the person who was from the students of knowledge in this masjid, I'm not talking about the ammat al-nas, the regular Amr Bakr and Zayn. From our ummah, if a person, shaitan, went to them and said, you lost two or three babies already, so therefore if you want this baby to live and to survive, name it Abdul Harif. Today, someone say, okay, I'll do it. But for the student of knowledge, if a shaitan came to him, every time he had a child, shaitan came to him in a dream, shaitan came to him in real life, said, name your baby, Abdul Harith. He's going to say, Kalla wallahi. I'm not naming my baby Abdul Harith because that goes against the tawheed of Allah. Azzawajal. That's with himself. What about Adam? Although Adam was in the Jannah, and he approached a tree and he made a mistake. His nature is to make mistakes. That's the nature of Benny Adam, all of them. But Adam being a Nabi and a Rasul, Salawatullahi wasalamu alayhi, Adam is not going to make a shirkul akbar. It's not going to happen. He's not going to murder someone. He's not going to gamble. He's not going to drink khamar. He's not going to make zina. He's not going to make riba. He's not going to do any of the major sins because the prophets and the messengers, they don't do major sins. And again, as I mentioned, in the hadith of Jibreel, in Salih Bukhari, a Muslim, when Jibreel came to the Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, tell me what is Islam and what is Iman. He said, and Iman is to believe in Allah, to believe in the Malaika, to believe in the books, to believe in the Rasul. Part of believing in the Rasul is the prophets, and the messengers. There's a distinction between the Nabi and the Rasul. He believes that. The NBA, they have a certain number, the Rasul, they have a certain number. Part of what he believes, they're the best of the human beings. They are ma'asumun, they have al isma when it comes to relaying the message. Part of what he believes about the Rasul is they make mistakes, but they don't make mistakes that are the major mistakes. And this is a major mistake. When an individual is approached by shaitan and he, as a result of that, names his child a name where he gives an ubudiya or servitude to other than Allah. And as we mentioned, Ikhwani, in the first class of teaching Kitab al Tawheed, one of the problems with the book, or one of the issues that we need to be aware of, is the weak hadith. Why would Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, the Sheikh of Islam, the Mujaddid, bring this hadith? It's not my problem. It's not my issue. I'm not responsible for coming up with that answer. I don't know. What I do know is we don't have ghulu in any scholar from the ulama of Islam. And this book has been serviced. It's been explained by different people. 
And it's also been explained and it's also been serviced in another way. And that is, some of the ulama, the tulab al-ilm, they went in this book and all they dealt with is the ahadith and the athar that are in the book. They don't get involved with explaining this, explaining that. What's the wisdom of this chapter, the connection of this chapter with the one before the one? They don't get into that. All they deal with are the athar and the ahadith. This particular hadith is not permissible. This hadith is da'if. It's not permissible for us to believe in it, so we won't even explain it. He mentioned after that that, and also from Ibn Abi Hatim, who collected this hadith, and also from Ibn Abi Hatim, with a sahih chain from the tabi Qatada. Qatada said, shirk in obeying him, not in worshiping him. And this is what I meant. Some of the scholars tried to find a way out to explain the hadith. Some of the scholars said that this hadith is not talking about Adam and Hawa. This hadith is from the Israeliyat. Some of them, like Qatada said, that Adam was not making shirk in obeying Allah Azawajal, but he's making shirk in worshiping him. It's all the same. Adam never made shirk with Allah Azza wa Jalla. So in respecting Qatada, no scholar who came after Qatada is similar to Qatada. The ulama during our time, whatever scholar you can think of, Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Taymiyyah, these people were not in comparison to Qatada. He's a tremendous scholar of Al-Islam. So even with this effort and this statement, it's not acceptable. We don't have to really spend a lot of time on the issue, the narration, and the explanation or trying to find a way out of the narration. It is futile. Adam, the father of Beni Adam, never made shirk with the lies of a gentleman. After that, the imam brought the third issue, and that is from Ibn Abi Hatim again, with a sahih chain from Mujahid, about Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, and when good came to them, as we mentioned, فَلَمَّا أَتَاهُمْ صَالِحَ When good came to them, Abu Ibn Abi Hatim mentioned that Mujahid, who took the Quran from Abdullah ibn, Mas- Abdullah ibn Abbas a number of times, Mujahid said, give us of good. He said, they were afraid that it would not be a human being. And this meaning was mentioned by Al-Hasan al-Basri and Sa'ad and others. So the point is, Ikhwani, this whole chapter, this whole chapter, it's enough for us just to understand and just to believe it's not permissible for an individual Muslim when he's going to have a child, he cannot name his child by something that has shirkun in it. That's enough that we have to know from the chapter. It's as simple as that. And we don't offer any excuses and we don't spend a lot of time trying to make a way out and an explanation. All of those narrations are not permissible. But in saying that, we still have respect for the scholars whose names were mentioned. Qatada, Mujahid, Ibn Abi Hatim. All of those people are from the major scholars of Islam. So we just can't throw away what they said and say, what were they talking about? Those people have no idea what they're talking about. We respect them as individuals but here here comes the test of a person's salafia a person's islam hey my sheikh whoever he happens to be what he said i don't believe in that and i don't accept it adam salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi never made shirkun with allah azawajal. come to the next chapter that is dealing again with the names of allah azawajal. قول الله تعالى ولله الأسماء الحسنى فدعوه بها. We dealt with this chapter before, and verily, Allah to Allah He has the most beautiful names, so call Him by His beautiful names. Allah تعالى He mentioned ولله الأسماء الحسنى فدعوه بها وذر الذين يلحدون في أسمائه. Allah He has the most beautiful names. So call Allah by those names because they're the most beautiful names and avoid those people who are heretical with his names. Again, 
يرحمك الله يا أخي ابن أبي حاتم he mentioned from Abdullah ibn Abbas those who are heretical with the names of Allah عز وجل are those who make shirk in Allah's names Khwan, this is really important because we have people who go overboard either way to the right or to the left Dr. Zakir Naik is giving da'wah to Allah عز وجل to people who are um, Hindus where he comes from in India Dr. Zakir Naik is not from the ulama of Al-Islam he's like us He's a da'i, his da'wah. His forte is comparative religion. Christianity and what they're saying and refuting the Bible and Christians. That's his forte. But is he an individual who knows about halal and haram and all of these issues in deep detail? Kalla wallahi. So don't go overboard. The fact that an individual could say, Allah said in Surah such and such 35 and ayat 120. This, 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 that. That doesn't make him a scholar. Dr. Zach and I, he mentioned that there are a thousand things that I know that Allah can't do. There are a thousand things that Allah, that I know Allah can't do. And then he went on to mention some of those things. And it's similar to what Ahmed Didat said before him. رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَغَفَرُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَهُ Ahmed Didat used to say Allah can't do everything. Allah can't take you, a human being, or a rock and throw you outside of his creation because he owns everything. So Allah can't throw you outside of his creation because he owns everything. Allah can't lie. Allah can't oppress. As a result of that statement, some of the people who have a tarabbus, a tarabbus is when you're waiting for someone to make a mistake. You're just waiting in the corner. You're just laying in the cut. You're waiting for him to make a mistake. When he makes a mistake, you make a big issue. So some of these people, this guy, Abu Abdullah, you find him on the internet. I warn you about that guy. He's not a person who appears to be sincere. Avoid that guy. Go to beneficial knowledge and issues like that. Don't go to people who have time to play games. They're not, they're not, they're not scholastic. They don't appear to be sincere. Bring the haq out and don't try to destroy people. Get off of that glu of SP and all of that stuff. Get off of that stuff. Defend the deen with the haq and with the proper etiquette. So Zach and Nike statement, his statement is batil. And his dalala. Zach and Naik, I know that man. He invite me, come to India. I'm going to tell you, that kalam is batil, is dalala. Allah Ta'ala mentioned the Quran, Allah ala kulli shayn qadir. Allah is able to do anything he wants to do. Anything. Wa kan Allah ala kulli shayn qadir. Allah has the ability to do whatever he wants to do. That's what Allah mentioned in the Quran. يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah does whatever He wants to do. But He made it haram upon Himself to oppress. He won't oppress anyone. He made that haram upon Himself. If He wants to oppress, He does whatever He wants to do. You a slave. Abdullah, Abdullah, Abdul Basit, Abdullah, Abdullah. And all of us are Abdullah. You can't come and start talking about what Allah can do. What a, shut up and don't say something like that. Is ilhad wa dharul ladina yulhiduna fi asma ila. Avoid those people who make ilhad heretical as it relates to the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't say that stuff. Uh, this man, Yusuf Estes, saying that the Quran, you know that kalam that he said, we say that's batil, that's dolala. Don't say that. You're not in a position to talk. That's beyond you. Stay in your lane. Say what you know. Give dawah. You want to do comparative religion? That's okay. Don't go overboard. Don't start giving fatawa, halal, haram, and speaking about issues that are not permissible. So when Zach and Naik mentioned this, some of the people took this statement to a sheikh, 
Sal al Fawzan. Sheikh Sal al Fawzan from the eminent premier ulama of Al Islam, who is now ma'asum. He said, The person who did this, he has ilhad, like the ayah said. Avoid those people who have ilhad, they're heretics in the names and attributes of Allah. So the guy, Abu Abdullah, comes and he puts that on the internet and it shows a sheikh, Sal Fuzan, said that Zak and Naik is a mulhit. Mulhit is from the worst categories of a human being. A mulhit. Ilhad. Al mulhid is the one who will smoke marijuana, he'll smoke weed, he'll smoke weed at the Kaaba. The mulhid is the individual who does something crazy. You have people who do sins away from the masjid, outside of the sacred monks. The mulhid, he'll do something crazy inside of the masjid. He'll take the Quran and take the pages and rip them out. And he does something terrible. I won't even give you examples by mentioning anything. Leave your imagination to imagine. That's a mulhid. Someone who does something crazy. You can't fathom. What's wrong with you? I can understand. This individual got weak and he made a mistake. I understand. That's the one who does ma'asiya and asi. The mulhid, he goes the extra yard to do something whacked out, something crazy. So as Sheikh Salih al Fawzan said, the one who says that Allah Azza can't do a thousand things, he's a mulhid. So this person comes and says, the ruling from a great scholar is that Zak and Naik is a mulhit. I told you a million times and I tell you again. As the people of the past said, they said that the mufti, the mufti, he is an asir. He is the captive of the one who's asking him the question. If any one of you were to call the sheikh, we'll see Allah Abbas. And you say, Sheikh will see Allah Abbas. You know Mufti Mink? Mufti Ismail, Ismail Mink? He this, he this, he that. The Sheikh will give you a fatwa based on that. So you basically got from him a fatwa like that. When they used to do that to Al Albani, Al Albani would say to him, Who are you? <laughs> Where you coming from? What's your name? What's your father's name? Where were you born at? And when the person gave him more information, he would say to him, Look, I advise you to get beneficial out knowledge. Don't call me with this. During this time, the sheikh has to defend the haq, has to defend, defend the religion. So he says, Sheikh will see Allah best. Mufti mink is this, Mufti mink is that. Now someone comes to you and says, Sheikh will see Allah best and Mufti mink is this and that. Do you have to take that, Yahi? Just because Sheikh will see Allah best said it? No, from what we learned, in our religion, and from what we learn from Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas, we don't make that taklid to people. Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas, Abu Usam al Kabir, he has to bring the delil. And it is not a delil that a person studied in the madrasa of Diobandi. It's not delil that the person's father is Diobandi. It's not delil that the person's father is Hanafi. What are you talking about? Every Hanafi. Hanafi can't be Salafi? What are you talking about? Hanafi can't be giving dawah to the Sunnah? I don't know the, delil, the, the, the details of that individual, but the point is you, you, and me. The money, the blood, and the honor of a Muslim is haram, sacred. Sacred. So if someone wants to come and talk about his honor and say he's a mubtadi, you make sure that there's clear delil facing you. What you don't know about, you're not responsible. So it's the responsibility of the person who's claiming this individual is off of the sunnah. You bring the delil so I can see it. It's Hanafi. What are you talking about? Imam Abu Jafar al-Tahawi was Hanafi. What are you talking about? Hanafi is not synonymous to being off of the sunnah. So anyway, as it relates to Zak and Naik, his kalam is batil and it's dalala. Allah does whatever he wants to do. And if Allah wanted to do whatever he wants to do it, he'll do it in the way that he wants to do it. And that's where we stop at. And that's the meaning of the statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, 
the companion of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He told the people, "Qif, haythu, waqaf al-nas." Stop where the companions stopped at. Stop where the ulama of the salaf stopped at. They were more intelligent than anybody who's living today about this deen. When it come, came to utilizing their intellect, they never, ever, ever said, Allah is not capable of this, Allah is not capable of that. Since you don't find them talking like that, you don't talk like that. You'll be okay. Don't be the first one, the new kid on the block, who's coming, seeing something new. Don't do that. Relax yourself and stay in your lane and pump your brakes and fall back. And we have no, absolutely no hesitation in saying that kalam of Dr. Zach and Nike, our brother, Ghafarullah Lana Walahu, is batil, is dalala. But is he a mulhid? He said, La wallahi. I don't agree with what a Sheikh Salih al Fozan said about that issue. One time, Khwani a Sheikh Salih al Fozan was asked about. Is it permissible for a person to call himself an athari? An athari, connecting himself to the ether. He said it's not permissible. I don't know the reason why he said that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we never accepted that from him. And we never accepted that from him, not because we're better than him, not because he belongs under our foot and we're more knowledgeable than him, but because there were other scholars who took another position like Sheikh al-Islam ibn Utaymiyyah, and the Dalil supports this, that there is no problem with an individual connecting himself to the Salaf. There's no problem with an individual connecting himself to the Athar, the Ahadith, and the Athar of the people who went before us. The point here, Ikhwan, Mukhtar, Sharif, Bedawi, Nuruddin, all of you, Zakaria, the point here is, don't allow yourself to be those people, Achi, Achi, Liban. Don't allow yourself to be those people who say, the Sheikh said, so therefore it's like that. What religion is that? Have respect for the ulama. Even when you know that the scholar made a mistake, he made a mistake, don't put him down and disrespect him. Don't do that. Have respect for the ulama. That's part of our da'wah. That's part of salafiyah. To respect him. But don't follow anybody, anybody, when what he's saying is wrong. When what he's saying is wrong, it's wrong. So how is it possible the person could call himself Hanbali, Hanbali, after Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he's Hanbali, but he can't call himself Athari? If anything, Hanbali is not permissible. If anything, how do you call yourself after another human being? Hanafi, Maliki, Hanbali. That's permissible, but I can't connect myself to the ether, atheri. We say, hey, take it easy. Just use the principles of Al Islam. So the point here is Dr. Zach and Nike, he made a mistake in what he said, and I'm pretty sure in Allahu Alam, if an individual were to talk to him, I will hope that he would reject that. But if he doesn't reject it in my business, in my responsibility, I say to him, today, tomorrow, yesterday, hey, that kalam is batil and it's dalala. Allah does whatever he wants to do and we have to avoid these types of statements. It is ilhad to play around with the names and the attributes of Allah Azzawajal. Is he a mulhid? No, I don't think he's a mulhid. I believe clearly that if someone were to bring this to him, bring it to his attention, I will hope I'm not responsible for his iman and his level of commitment. I will hope if someone brought this to him, he would say, Sadaqt, you told the truth. Astaghfirullah. Wa tubu ilayhi. Anyway, the Imam, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said that, uh, and from him, Allah is from Al Ilah, and Al Uzza is from Al Aziz. Part of being a heretic in the names of of Allah Azzawajal and his attributes is what the Kufar Quraysh did. They had some idols. They called the idol Al-Lat and Al-Uzza. Those names come from Al-Ilah. Instead of saying Abdul Al-Ilah, 
the slave of the one who is worshipped. They called al ilah al-lat. Instead of saying Abdul al-Aziz, al-Aziz, they called that name of Allah al-Uzza, and they made a god by that name, an idol, al-Lat and al-Uzza, and they were from the big idols of Kufav Quraysh, and also from al-Imam al-Amish, Amish. They give it meanings that are not included inside of them. They give it meanings that are not included inside of them. So these two chapters, Ikhwani, they have everything to do, again, similar to the chapters that preceded it. They go to show and indicate that when it comes to the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa there is fiqh in these issues. They're fiqh, faham. When you hear the word fiqh, it doesn't mean it's something big and extraordinary. It's really difficult to comprehend. No, it's simple. Just take your time. Don't call your child Abdul and Nabi, Abdul al Rasul, Abdul Abbas. Don't call him by any of those names. Abdul Kaaba, Abdul Quran. You want to show your commitment to the Quran, so you call him Abdul Quran. La yajuzu ma yambagi. Kufrun billah wa shirkun. Not permissible. And you don't want to give your child that complex. He's growing up. And we had this individual from our brothers when I was studying. He was from Afghanistan. His name was Fida Hussein. He was a good student academically. He was a good student academically. Fida Hussein. First time the teacher called his name, Fida Hussein, the teacher looked up and said, why they name you that? He said, don't ask me, I wasn't there. He said, I wasn't there. And from that time, as he began to grow and develop, because he's from Afghanistan, he never learned Tawheed, never learned anything. He was ignorant, like all of us, most of us. Many of us were ignorant. From when the t- first teacher said that kalam to him, the guy said, hey, I want you guys to start calling me Abu Abdullah. Don't call me Fida Hussein anymore. By the time we graduated, he became, mashallah, a student who was mutamakkin in the Aqidah. A person we perceive him as being a muwahid, a student of a Tawheed. But I'll never forget, as long as I live and Allah knows best, that when the first teacher who called the roll, the roll call, he called this person, who's a revert, Engelbert Humperdinck. He said, what kind of name is that? Engelbert Humperdinck. He called the next guy, Ahmed Bilal. Next guy, Musa Abdullah from, Suma- from Sudan. He was calling the people. He came to Fida Hussein. He said, what is that? Well, what kind of name is that, Fida Hussein? He said, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'll never forget it. He said, I wasn't there. The teacher said, this is a name. He said, your family have a tashayur in it? He said, yes, they have a tashayur. They have Shiaism in my family. From that class on, the guy said, hey, stop calling me that. My name is Abu Abdullahi. He graduated, didn't go on to higher studies, but he's still in my mind, that guy. I remember him clearly. So you don't want to give your kid this type of name that will cause a complex with him from amongst the people of knowledge when they hear Fidel Hussein. They say, that's shirkun billah. What kind of name is that? Okay, we're going to stop here, inshallah. We'll resume chapter number 52 tomorrow. If you brothers have any questions. Before you have your questions, uh, Ismail is not here right now. I just want to ask, in the uh, Saturday class that just passed, the mm, question was presented by Ismail. And he, how many of you were here in the Saturday's class? How many were here? The ayat in Surah Yunus, Allah Ta'ala mentioned, Allah inna uliya, Allah inna uliya Allahi, la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzunun, alladhina aminu wa kanu yattaqun, verily the uliya of Allah. They won't be sad, nor will they be fear, nor will they have any fear. They are the people who have iman and they have taqwa. They will get the bushra in the dunya and in the hereafter. Does anybody remember what the bushra was? Does anyone remember what the bushra was? I'm gonna give you fifty dollars, fifty pounds, inshallah. Anybody remember what the bushra was? I left my wallet home. 
Allah, I'm serious. Aftal, who brought me here, knows what the story is. I left my wallet home, Allah. Does anyone know what the Bushra is? Fadiyah. A good dream. Yes, that's one. What's the second one? Good job, Akhi. What's your name, son? Saad. Like Saad ibn Abi Waqas. How old are you, Saad? Good job, Saad. You in school here? Like in college? Where you at? In college? 17. What part of Somalia are you from? 18. What part of Somalia are you from? Hamarwain. <laughs> What's your tribe, Saad? What's your tribe? Huh? What? Habar <laughs> Kidr. Habar Kidr. You're from Re Hamar or Hamarwain? Which one? You're from Mogadishu. Good job, Saad. The Bushra in the dunya, as Al Imam Ibn Kathir mentioned, was that the good dream is a Bushra. The good dream is a Bushra. And also that the companions came and they said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you have to say about a person? I went back and I checked this ayat and the narrations said that, what do you think about a person who he has ikhlas in what he does? And after he did what he did, the people praised him. So he wasn't doing it for the praise of the people. He had ikhlas, the narration said. He did it with ikhlas and the people praised him. They were impressed with what he put forward from sadaqa, from whatever. What do you think about that? What's the ruling of that? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tilka Ajil Bushr al Mu'min. That is the Bushr of the believer before he gets to Allah. Good job, Akhi Sa'ad. MashaAllah. I will not forget your name from this day. What about, Bidrinillah, what about the Bushra in the Akhirah? Anybody know? Huh? Yeah, I, we didn't deal with that because the brother who read off of the internet, he only read us this part about the dunya, the dunya. From the bushra of the akhira is when munkar and nakir comes to the person. And they ask him, What's your, who's your lord? What's your deen? What do you have to say about that man? And he answers everything correctly. They would give him glad tidings. They would say, you answer correctly. Now sleep the sleep of a newly married man. Only the man who's been married before, he knows what that is. You guys who have not been married, you have no idea what it means. Sleep the way that a newly married man sleeps. Because you answered it correctly. That's the bushra in the hereafter. When he goes to the jannah, the malaika will give him salams. He'll be told, go into this place and that place. All of those good things that were mentioned. And there are a lot of delils for the bushra in the hereafter. And a lot of bushras for the dunya as well. Good job, Akhi Saad. So, for your questions, Fadl Ya Akhi. Your second name? Now, we shouldn't change our father's name. Whatever your father's name, you should stick to that name because the Prophet Wasallam mentioned three people that Allah has cursed. And one of them is the one who changes the name of his father. So whatever his father's name happened to be, if he's going to keep his father's name, he should do that. He should keep his father's name. He shouldn't change his father's name where it could be understood he's connecting himself to another man because al islam came to protect that came to protect the lineage of the people does he have to put his father's name in his passport and make it his legal name he doesn't necessarily have to do that he's going to take a kunya for himself abu abdullahi like the kufadu the first name and then his name is ahmed that he named himself and then he called himself some type of luck of uh, something al athari so he's abu abdullah ahmed al athari there's nothing the hadith said that he has to mention his father's name in his passport but if someone were to ask him what's your father's name don't change your father's name whatsoever abu ahmed abu abdullah 
Ahmed Al Atheri is for his passport. What is your father's name? Is going to say my father is Thomas Green, and so forth and so on. Father Yahi Zakaria. Uh, concerning the uh, people of Jannah, there won't be old people in Jannah, as the Prophet told that lady, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, there won't be old people in al Jannah. But there is an authentic hadith that Hassan Hussein will be the leaders of the Shabab in al Jannah. So, how do we understand that? Are people of different age and categories and so forth and so on? That's talking about where they were in the dunya. They were Shabab in the dunya, and Shabab in the dunya with Hassan Hussein doesn't mean they were 15, 16, 17. They were above 30, 35. So in terms of the youngsters, it just goes to show during the Arabs, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the Shabab, they weren't 16, 17. Those were kids. So the Shabab, 25, 30, 35, these people were considered to be the Shabab. So in the dunya, they died when they were young, and around that age, in their mid-30s, 40s, so forth, so on. So they're going to be the leaders of the people who died as Shabab in the dunya, in the dunya. Another issue before I forget, uh, one of our brothers was asking me after the last class, and they were taking me home, about the ayat, وَمَا جَعْلُ اللَّهُ قَلْبَيْنِ fi. Allah has not put two hearts inside of the one body of any one man. There are some narrations that mention that um, some of the people said that the Prophet had two hearts. So Allah Ta'ala mentioned Allah didn't make two hearts in the body of one man to refute that. Some of the narrations of the tafsir said that there was a prophet, there was a man during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People were saying he had two hearts, so the ayat came down to dispel that. All of that is not authentic. The meaning of the ayat: Allah did not make two hearts in the body of one man. Allah didn't make you, 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 you or me. In a situation where one heart is to worship other than Allah and the other heart is to worship Allah. All of your heart has to be for the sole ibadah of Allah. Azawajal. If there were two gods in this dunya, if there were two gods, then the heavens and the earth would be destroyed. Because one god would say, rain, and the other one would say, don't rain. One would say snow, the other one would say uh, make it rain. The other one would tell you to walk, the other one would say sit down. The other one would say eat, the other one would say drink. So it would be confusion. So Allah Azza wa Jal, the ayat is saying have al ikhlas only to Allah Azza wa Jal and not to multiple gods. And he gave that similar tool in the Quran that Allah gives a similar tool to an abd, a slave. He has two leaders, two, two masters. One tell them to do one thing, the other tell them to do the other thing. It's going to be confusion in the earth. Wallahu a'lam. Tafadhali akhi. When the Muslim lady gets married, it is haram for her to change her name. And if she changed her name to the surname of her husband, this haram is from the major sins. Ali when he was asked by the people during his time, did the Prophet ﷺ leave you, Ali, any special knowledge? Do you have any special knowledge that no one else has from the companions? He said, La wallahi. The only thing that I have is what's in this thing of my sword. He pulled the sword out, pulled the piece of paper out. He said, this is the only thing that I had, that I wrote down, showing the permissibility that the companions used to write during the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And 
he said, may the curse of Allah be upon the person who changes the demarcation of the earth. This is your property, but somehow you stretched it out to include your neighbor's property. So you're taking from his wealth. May Allah curse that individual. And the second one, may Allah curse the person who connects himself to other than his father. His father is this, whether it's the lady or the man. May Allah curse that individual who connected himself to other than his father. So the lady and the man, no one should uh, connect themselves to other than their biological fathers. The person has problems, drama, issues with the father, hates his father. The lady, the father molested her, for an example. It's just an example. Hashirullah. The boy feels his father abandoned him and his mother. Whatever the case is, he hates his father. He should remember, still his father has not one right but hukuk over him. And the hukuk that the father has are mimi. You'll never give him his rights unless you found him in slavery. He's a slave and you came, you freed him. You'll never be able to find him like that today. So you're ever indebted to your father. You, Zakaria, you will always be indebted to your dad. Is your father a perfect person? La wallahi, I'm a perfect person to my dad, to my kids. Whatever your father did or didn't do, what you like, don't like, you will never be able to give him his haq. Unless, the prophet said, you found him as a slave. And then you put the money down and you freed him. If you do that, you gave him your haq. Now you can say to him, Hey, dad, hey, dad, look. <laughs> but no one's gonna be no one's gonna be in a position to do that. So the man or the woman, whatever the case is, from the haq is, you have to keep their name. Uh, I don't remember who the third person is. We're going to leave that to Adwi to figure it out. Come back to us next week, inshallah. Tell us what uh, we found. Um, Abdul Harith, uh, he is the uh, slave of the one who is planting something. Abdul Harith. Al Harith, the Hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is clear. Ahabul Asma'il Allah Abdullah wa Abdul Rahman wa Astaquha Al Harith wa Hammam. The best name, most beloved name to Allah is Abdullah Abdul Rahman. And the most truthful name is Al Harith and Hammam. Al Harith is the one who's going to plant something. He's going to plant for himself good or evil. So if you name your child Al Harith, he's really Al Harith because he's planting for himself good. Or he is planting for himself evil. As for Abu, Abu al Harith, Abu al Harith. Does anybody know what that means from the Prophet? Abu al Harith. Anybody know? It's one of the names of the lion. Yomu Qiyamah, the lion came, and the, the hadith said that the lion took the sheep and ate the sheep. And then the shepherd of the sheep came in, got the lion back, the wolf, the lion, the lion. He got the lion back. And then the lion said, who's going to protect it, Yom Al-Qiyamah? The prophet in that hadith called the lion Abu Al-Harith, one of the many names of the lion, Abu Al-Harith. Fadal. Yes, it's permissible to call someone Aziz or Rahim. Because in the Quran, Surah Yusuf, the lady that tried to seduce Yusuf, Yusuf from himself, she was Imra'atul Aziz, the wife of the Aziz. So Allah called him Al Aziz. And Allah called the Prophet وسلم, Rahim. Not Al Rahim, but Rahim. Laqad ja'akum rasulun min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma'anitum harisun alikum bil mu'minin ra'ufur Rahim. So he called the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Ra'uf and he called them the Rahim in this particular ayah. Any more questions, Ikhwani? Um, 
Um, there's no real Sahih version of Kitab al as such. Different people gave explanations of Kitab al as we mentioned in the very first lesson. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen probably has the best one. It's three volumes and it's deep and it's detailed. The Sheikh Al Harras, the Egyptian Sheikh who was in Saudi Arabia, he also gave a explanation of Kitab Tawheed, the son of or the grandson of a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdurraz Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdur Wahab also gave the tafsir of Kitab Tawheed. Ali Hassan al Halabi gave the Sharh of Kitab Tawheed. So many people gave the Sharh of the book. Each Sharh is bringing something that the other one didn't bring, but no one brought a Sharh that they said, this is only what is authentic. What I mentioned during the talk is that some of the students of knowledge, they came and they just dealt with only the Hadith. They didn't deal with explanation of anything, just the Hadith. And that's an example of uh, the scholars taking care of and servicing this particular book. So if you go back to the very first talk of Kitab al-Tawheed, we dealt with that situation. Okay, inshallah, we're going to uh, stop right here. And we ask Allah to uh, give us the khayr and the dunya and the akhirah. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Hey Saad, where do you live at? Huh? How do you get here? You come by yourself?